Look at this flake. That is a nice piece of fish. So one misconception about being a private chef is that you need to have a Michelin star worthy meal ready at the snap of a finger. That was not my experience. As a private chef, you're essentially a professional home cook, right? You're cooking at a professional level, you're using proper technique and you're upkeeping a certain level of quality, but you're not cooking in a restaurant, you're cooking in somebody's kitchen at their house. Think about it, how do you wanna eat on a Tuesday night? Most of the time we want simple, practical, healthy, and always delicious food which is exactly what we're gonna make today. We're gonna to keep it real easy and think of the meal in terms of its classic division, a protein, a carb, and a veg. Let's start with the protein. My old clients loved fish, specifically salmon, and I have a fun little trick that you can add to your skill set to make restaurant quality fish. This little dangler right here. <laughs> that little dangler is the belly. It's really, really tasty, but we're gonna remove it just for uniformity's sake. But save it, eat it, it's the best part in my opinion. Arguably the most delicious part, that's for the cook. This is called a quick brine. It's gonna take your fish from so-so to really, really good. Today we're doing this with our wonderful salmon, but this works with any fish. Go ahead and sprinkle equal parts kosher salt and white sugar all over the fish, skin side and all, everywhere. And be liberal here, do not hold back, don't be too scared. This is what's technically considered a gradient cure for all my nerds out there. We're not worried about overly seasoning the fish with salt and sugar because we're going to control the seasoning's penetration with time rather than by equilibrium. Let the fish cure for 15 minutes or no longer than 20 because you could over cure it if you do that. Give that fishy a nice shower, then pat it dry because remember moisture is the enemy of brown food and brown food is tasty food. Little bonus trick for ya. Need a really sharp knife for it. Come up and kind of pinch it like that. This is scoring the fish. People do it because they say it helps it cook a little quicker, but really I just think it looks nice. Totally optional. I just sharpened my knives. Add a little dash of oil to the pan. Not too much because the salmon fat will render out. Then lay the dry fish in skin side down. The most foolproof way to cook fish is to do it over medium heat in a non-stick pan. I know some of my line cooks out there are probably cringing, but that's just the truth. When cooking fish with edible skin, not just salmon, the goal is to cook the fish to a perfect medium temperature while ensuring that the skin gets crisp. Medium heat just allows you to watch the fish and monitor how it's cooking with ease, and the non-stick surface eradicates any worries of the skin sticking to the pan, so, you know, you're fine. So you can see how, see how the flesh of the fish is kind of opaque and it's coming up into this like ruby, pale, still uncooked part of the salmon because the heat is coming and traveling upwards. Once we flip it, it'll do the same thing, travel upwards the other way. That's a good indicator to see how close you are to finishing cooking the fish and when to flip. Matter of fact, I think we'll flip right now. Once the fish is opaque, just under halfway through the filet, carefully flip it over to its flesh side and continue cooking. Remove the salmon once it's cooked to your liking. With product this sexy, I prefer to take it to a medium, but you can cook it for a little longer if that gives you a little bit of a spook. All right, moving on to our carbohydrate in the form of grain salad. Go! This is bulgur, AKA cracked wheat. It's very popular in the Middle East. It's actually stocked at a plenty of grocery stores. I've seen it all over the place, but if you can't find it, literally any grain works for this. Cook the grain or soak the grain, chill it down and just substitute it for this. The dopest part about this is I literally just soaked this for like 30 minutes and it's fully tender and ready to rock. All we gotta do is drain it. This is a super simple cold salad that my clients used to absolutely love. I'd often make it with quinoa, but I prefer using this stuff. Let's prep some veg for the salad. Here I got me some beautiful hothouse miters. We're just gonna quarter these up. So now we're gonna seed tomatoes. It's just gonna make it so that the final product is a little crunchier and less boogery. Yeah, tomato booger, it's a thing. Lay the quarters down and use a sharp knife to slice the seeds away. Go ahead and save these guts if you'd like. They'd be great in a little shakshuka or something like that. Then just lay the tomatoes skin side down and slice them to a large dice. Okay, cuke city. This is a Persian cucumber, which has smaller seeds naturally. So just like our maters, cukes have seeds as well, which we are going to remove. Kind of a little rule of thumb that I like to live by. If the seeds are larger than popcorn kernels, remove them. If they're not, leave them be. These aren't that big to be honest, but I wanna show you how to take the seeds out anyways. Quarter the cuke lengthwise, lay it on its side, then simply slice off the seeds in one long sweep. You can chop those up and throw them in a yogurt sauce or something. Now simply dice the cukes up so that they are a similar size to our tomatoes. Let's get to the onion.
In order to take away some of the bite from the onion, we're gonna add some vinegar to this and macerate them. What that's gonna do is log them with acidity, taking down that bite like five notches and making them almost like quick pickles. Plus they're really pretty. I'm using red wine vinegar today, purple onions, red wine. You can use any vinegar you want. Apple cider, rice, sherry, anything. You don't need that much. Cover it, give it a shake. And this will all kind of just like wilt down onto itself over time and macerate. Let's mix this thing. We got our soaked bulgur, which nearly triples in size, the diced cukes and tomatoes, some of our macerated onion, freshly chopped parsley, some solid olive oil, lemon juice, black pepper, Aleppo pepper, you could also just totally use chili flake if that's what you got, and finally, salt, a good amount. Notice I put a fair amount of salt on this thing. That was intentional. And that's because cold food needs more seasoning than hot food. With any cold dish, you're gonna need to have a sort of a heavier hand with the salt for it to really come through. So remember, cold food, more salt. Give the whole shadiddly a nice little schmixy schmixy and boom, you got yourself a bangin' side dish to pair with any meal. Best thing about this is you can get it done and then put it in the fridge and worry about everything else, right? You can even make this ahead of time. Let's talk veggies, baby. Sorry. All right, before you click off the video, wait, 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 because we are going to talk about a way to upgrade even the lamest blanched vegetables. <laughs> but first, we gotta blanch the vegetables. In our case, this broccolini. Broccolini. No, it's broccolina. What's a male? Brock. Brock. <laughs> Just brock. Heavily salt a large pot of boiling water, then drop the vegetables in. Broccolina. Boil, mother worker. Cook for about two to three minutes until the broccolini is bright green and almost, but not quite fully, cooked through. Then transfer the vegetables to an ice bath to shock them, aka stop the cooking process. We blanch these vegetables to one, par cook them, and two, embellish and lock in their beautiful vibrant green color. Pat those little BBs dry and bring a heavy cast iron up on high heat. You want this pan ripping hot, like to the point where you, you can't really, ow, don't do that. You want it really hot. <laughs> the oil should smoke as soon as it hits this pan because you want it to char. We want to blacken these as much as possible. Open a window, turn your hood vent on. I don't have one, wish me luck. Add a dash of high heat neutral oil to the pan and place your broccolini in, in a single layer. Season with a pinch of salt, and if you have something to weigh it down, use it. This works really, really, really well with green beans, asparagus, regular broccoli, etc. Just make sure to remove the vegetables as soon as they take on a char as to not overcook them to a mush. Finally, it is time to eat. Let's finish what we started. Here I have some shallots that I thinly sliced and fried off. I'm adding a pinch of salt and a nice healthy pinch of the god particle, aka MSG, then sprinkling them on the veg for a nice little final touch. Our grain salad gets a final dusting of herbs. You can sneak a little more olive oil on there too. And our salmon gets the crunchy salt treatment just for a little extra texture. Some people call it flaky salt, but I don't know. I, I don't use it because of its shape. I use it because of the texture that it provides. Now, my clients preferred a family style service, so over the years I got pretty good at plating things nicely for family style service, but this is how I would do it if it was for a plated dinner. Very rustic and very simple, just like this meal and just like the way that I love to cook on the day to day. All right, let's see how we did. You got the translucent flesh, the beautiful char, that crispy char. What can I say? That's some well-cooked fish. And if uh, you're kind of weirded out by medium, medium rare fish, try it before you hate it. Mm. It's kind of like a steak, right? You don't want a super overcooked, rubbery, kind of like tasteless piece of beef. Same thing with fish. All right, and on top of this super fresh salad, you got the hot, the hot, the cold. It's a nice contrast of uh, temperatures. And this beautiful broccolini that isn't grossly wilty because we cooked it to al dente beforehand. We finished cooking it and it got its color and char. And I mean, listen. It's still snappy. Even though I'm not a private chef anymore, to this day I use these techniques to cook meals for my friends, for my family, for the people I love. And I hope you can do the same.
If you dug the video, do the thing, the YouTube guy thing, right? Like the video, sub to the channel if you're new. If you're an existing omnivore, what's good? Thanks for watching. Oh, and guys, super exciting news. The official Omnivorous Adam Patreon page is official. It's a thing, we're doing it. I never wanna charge you guys anything for, for making this content and for doing what I do. I want everything to be free. I want you guys to watch my stuff like whenever you want for free, but doing stuff like this and making these videos, buying these ingredients, putting in this time, it's not free, unfortunately. There's a whole bunch of fun benefits that are going to be listed over on the Patreon. One of my personal favorite things we got is the new Omnivorous HQ Discord channel. I'll be running giveaways, there will be special announcements, a newsletter, a lot of fun stuff, so head over and check that out and uh, yeah, I appreciate you in advance. Until next time.